You may already be aware that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. Here is a commonplace use of a catalyst. We've got uh, araldite, which is a strong adhesive, and the adhesive is in the white tube, but it has to be mixed with a hardener in the red tube, and the hardener consists of a catalyst which uh, catalyzes a reaction and causes a hardening of the glue. So that's a common use of a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. But we have to know a little bit more than that. We have to also know that it uh, is unchanged at the end of a chemical reaction and that's why only a small amount of a catalyst is needed to catalyze a large amount of reactant. Um, we also need to know about the specificity of catalysts. A commonly used reaction for demonstrating the effect of a catalyst is the decomposition or breakdown of a substance called hydrogen peroxide H2O2 which breaks down into water H2O and oxygen O2 which can collect as bubbles in a measuring cylinder or a gas syringe. And we can use various metal oxides to see which one uh, acts best as a catalyst. In order to perform a fair test, you would use the same volume of the same concentration of hydrogen peroxide and the same mass of the metal catalyst, just changing the identity of the catalyst each time, and then measure the volume of the gas which has been produced uh, every 20 seconds, perhaps until the end of the reaction. It would also be sensible to have a baseline, in other words, to measure the volume of gas which is produced when no catalyst is used, and for example in this reaction we might get little or no oxygen produced with no catalyst at all, but if we use various other metal oxides we might get an increase in the amount and uh, in the speed of the reaction, but uh, using manganese oxide gives us a far faster reaction giving us more uh, oxygen in a quicker time and that's because the manganese oxide is specifically a very good reaction catalyst. So in summary a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction but it's unchanged at the end of the reaction so if we'd started off with one gram of manganese oxide we would have ended up with one gram of manganese oxide which we could then dry off and use as a catalyst the following day. Now, because the catalyst uh, is unused in the chemical reaction, then it can react with many, many, many uh, molecules of the reactant, and therefore only a tiny amount of catalyst is needed because the same catalyst can be used over and over again. Catalysts are specific to particular reactions. If we think back to our module C2, we learned there that in the Haber process for making ammonia, a specific catalyst is used, which is iron and various chemical reactions have got various catalysts. It's not one catalyst for every job. In biology, we learn about enzymes being biological catalysts. These are substances which speed up chemical reactions in the body and in animals and plants. And these are specifically shaped proteins which uh, combine and collide with various reactants in order to uh, make them change. For example, in our digestion system we have various catalysts like amylase that break down starch into sugar, for example. Now it's veering off the specification a little here because uh, you don't actually have to know how catalysts work but you are aware of the reaction having a activation energy and we've learnt that successful collisions are those which have more energy than the activation energy and which are therefore successful and lead to a final uh, product. Now what catalysts do is they affect this activation energy and they lower the activation energy which means that more collisions are uh, successful, more collisions have sufficient energy to react and therefore the rate of reaction increases. Here's a past paper question. Paul investigates the reaction between sulfuric acid and zinc metal. Hydrogen gas and zinc sulfate are made and write a word equation for this reaction. Well the reactants are the sulfuric acid and the zinc, we won't bother writing metal because that's not a chemical name, producing hydrogen, again we won't bother writing the gas bit, plus zinc sulfate. Look at the diagram, it shows the apparatus he uses. 
Uh, we've got some sulfuric acid in the flask along with some lumps of zinc and we're collecting the gas in a gas syringe. And he measures the volume of gas in the gas syringe um, every minute. Look at the graph. It shows his results. At what time did the reaction finish? Well, that would be the point at which the line becomes horizontal. So reading down, that looks like 4.3 minutes, give or take. Then he uses a catalyst to speed up the reaction. He doesn't change anything else. So the reaction will be faster, so a steeper graph, but it will still level out at the same uh, volume of gas.